Hi, and welcome to the farm. We sure appreciate you being here today. Thought we'd bring you along today as we do our last poultry harvest of 2022. So, oh, if you're interested in becoming a little more self-sufficient, follow along on our adventure today. But be prepared, some chickens are going to be uh, going to freezer camp today. As you can see here, Sean's just calming the first hen down, keeping her nice and relaxed. He's going to then put her into the hugging cone or killing cone. Go make one slice on the jugular. Very humane way of calling your poultry. Because she'll go through a couple of stages where nerves will kick in. And we notice there's less wing breakage and leg breakage if I hold them. Do not chill on me. Happens upon occasion. Hopefully not the first one though. That's not a good sign. Make for a whole a shoot time. We don't want that. You don't have to hold them. You can just leave them kick, but we've had them come out of the bucket and out of the cone, and that's not good. And we've had them break wings and break legs. So it's not worth it. You just have to hold them for a few seconds until they're done. And their nerves are done. And then they're okay. That's their last little flight to heaven right there. Alrighty. Now what, babe? Now I just wait and let her drink. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll wait about a minute or so and get another one. I'll transfer her over to the feather box to let her drain some more for the four minutes and then get another one and do it again and start the rotate. Yeah, now we get the second one. Thank you for your sacrifice, Mama. Nourish our bodies, our souls, and then back to Mother Earth. We sure appreciate you. Ooh. Got the first one hanging, bleed out more before he dips it. On to the next. <coughs> Think my shit went out. Oh, uh, you'll, you'll drip the water on it. They go bird. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at them thighs. That's the thunder thighs we look for. 
<laughs> Baby got back. Try to, to feather the wings and thighs and legs really, really, really well because, well, we That's eat the skin of those. And then we don't really eat the skin of the breast. We prefer the boneless, skinless. I keep my mouth shut. I'm just glad too. And I'm shut glad my eyes. we've done it enough to know and shut my eyes. right that that first good it jump or two on. you kind of uh, keep everything closed and clenched. Put this lift off like kind of right here for you. Yeah. Just in case, huh? Well you never know. You never know with these things. They happen. I'm just glad it was you and not me. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Sorry. How you doing, Bubba? Getting it done? Yeah. I like my scissors. I can't help it. It's all right. I like my scissors. Hey. I'm surprised you're on the tall end of the table, baby. No. Is it not too tall today? No, it's not bad today. Good, we must have it just right then. I did have to move the trash can. It threw me off with my rhythm. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I had it over here because last time I was on that side and you were on this side, right? And because of the trash can, I kept spraying you with the water. So I figured this way, if I move the trash can on this side of the table, when I sprayed the water down the hill, it wouldn't. Splugia. Excuse me? Splugia. One more time. Splish. You know. Yep. Nope. Splush. Can't say I do, but yep. You know splush. You know, where you get like gush on you. Like 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 gross stuff. Like the splidge from the movie when they found the peaches and they called it splidge. What was that? Holes. But Holes. Know. Yeah, they see? Call yeah, they called it splidge. I don't know if that's what they called it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they called it. We got it. All right. We gotta look that up. Now he's going into the cavity. 
from the chicken. We already removed away all that. <laughs> Whoa, hey now. I got a camera there, dude. Was that payback for splidging you? Damn straight. All <laughs> still hot. I think still I think a grab. Don't spray a bunch of water in it. Gut, you'll regret it. Oh, yeah, trust no. me. I'm taking it up higher. I'm taking it up higher. I'm taking it up a mountain. It's time, it's time to jump. My eyes got flickering flames. Up to the sky, make it rain. Breaking the frames, breaking the chains. Ain't nobody holding the reins. Turning it on, trigger the bomb. I got the world in my palm. Staying calm in the storm. Where I was born, I called it home. I'm hitting the hardest. I'm hitting the target. My cut is the sharpest. Season the moment. We got this. We got this. This, they can't stop this We got this, we got this We can't stop We got this, we got this They can't stop this Is there a full of rocks and grass? Which don't stink, thank God If you feed them food, it stinks It smells like fermented grain out like sour something. Gout. You got swollen toes if you feed them? What? It's like gout. You got swollen toes if you feed them? <laughs> no. They're just, they smell. Their guts smell and they'll be full of poopy. So it just makes them so much harder to clean if you feed them the day you butcher them. And then my nemesis, removing the lining of the gizzard. Yeah, usually you got your mom doing that. Usually mom does this part, yeah. You know, she's with belly boo today. Inside. That's it. Friends are dying. There's no grace. What are we doing, Mama? Yep, yeah, this is presumed that yep. the calling is done, the feathering is done, yep. and then this is what you're left with? Yep, yep. So the first thing I do is rinse it off real good to start the cooling process. Then I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of the head because we don't keep read that. If you want to wash the scissors right away because the feathers are not good. Right? Yeah, you want to try to keep the cross contamination between the feathers and like any dirt from their feet or anything like that. You know, ideally, if you can scrub their feet, you can, but we're just pretty careful about where we put the feet until we take them off and how clean we keep the table until we do so. So I went ahead and took the head off. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull back any of the, the skin. I don't want to keep that with my drumstick, so I pull that back and then just cut the tendon right here between this joint and it'll release and you can just bend it right back real easy. If it doesn't bend back real easy, you didn't cut in the right spot. And then once it's like that, you can use a knife, which I'll do that here in a second. It's just a little harder. We prefer the scissors, but you can come in with a knife and just kind of downward stroke and then back up the opposite way. If you ever question it, just keep in mind your drumstick and your bone that you normally see on the drumstick. Yeah, you want to see that nice roundness right here so that when you eat your drumstick, you don't get any splinters of bones. So again, you can see I got some dirt on the table. I have some on my gloves. I just try to keep that clean, keep my chicken away from it. And the next thing I'm going to do is come in here. I use my fillet knife. I use the scissors. Really yeah. doesn't matter. However you get it. However, yep. And I just start breaking this skin away from the breast. Now we don't keep any of the skin, but if you do, you want to be careful cutting into this because it'll rip real easy and then you'll lose some of your skin from your breast. Or we don't keep that. We really don't, you know, we're not real gingerly. And then this is the esophagus. It's all ribbed. This is the throat here where they begin their digestion. 
I'm just pulling all of the skin and the tendons away from the neck bone. That makes gutting a lot easier. Gives you a nice handle. Yep. And then you can just go ahead and free up that esophagus. Just one less thing you gotta pull away. And again, I'm just going in and holding that neck throat with my finger. Not really pulling this way because I don't want to pull the organs up. But that, you know, the guts, the colon, I guess, right? They colon up. But their crawl sits right here attached to their breast muscle and their skin of their neck. Give right? it a, give and it a the neck. squish. So, you can so tell it's right squishy, there, little, right? little ball. And you can see some water coming out of the throat. So I keep that pinched and then I just come in and pull it away from the breast and the neck skin. Like that. And then to make my life easier, I go ahead and get rid of this because we don't eat a bunch of chicken skin, really. I just keep it on my wings. And then make sure that crawl sits right there that you get it pulled away from the breast meat. Like that. All this, I call it sinuate tissue. I don't know if that's the correct name, but that's what I call it. All that probably not. <laughs> On a deer it is, Dad but. Dad said, probably not. <laughs> but that's kind of what it is, like tendony, stringy muscle stuff. So now that's free from the neck, from the breast. The neck is clear. Now I'm going to come in from the backside. I hold the legs back. That puts the organs here. So I grab this skin and pinch it. Then I can kind of release the legs. And I know my organs are below that. Okay? There's no organ in there. It's all below my finger. And that's why I can come in confidently with a knife and just nick that, that sac that holds your organs in. And I come in literally right at the the breastbone here. I'm still not confident, so I just <laughs> use the scissors and get a little itty bitty yeah, hole and can, then rip it with my yeah, fingers. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. You can always just get a little until you can see inside, which will look like that there. Yep. And then you can pinch this and pull it out until you see an opening and then stick your fingers in and then just pull the rest of the way. Now, if you have big hands like Tristan, he's not going to be able to get into that. But if you look, you can see everything's down here so you can come in we'll use scissors this time and just cut a little bit of this meat back same on this side you just don't want to cut into the the organs or your breastbone you know or your breast you know your breast meat you want to save that now how to describe the gut the way i say is you want to go in from the top and release all the tissues connected here and then in each rib right you're going to take your fingers and scrape under until you find the backbone and loosen all that stringy tissue then i'll come in with this hand scrape down them ribs releasing the lungs find the heart the backbone release all that coming down once i do that i can reach in and pull up and pull out loosening up towards the top of the breastbone now I'm going to turn my fingers and I can fill the ribs. My fingers are literally, I don't know if you can see them poking there. No? Mm -mm. No? They're literally right there. I can feel the lung in those ribs. So I'm just working my fingers under those lungs in between each rib, lifting and just working. Don't be afraid you're going to puncture anything. You have to really poke or pull pretty, pretty hard before you puncture something. And then once I can feel the backbone, the spine on the back of my fingers under there, I'll come in and do it from the other side. Working from the top of the breast and then reaching in and loosening all that up. Maybe if you could take two seconds just to spray it and cool it off real quick, you can set it right here on the table. And I'll do it next. How many have we done so far, Tristan? Mm, I think this one's number four. Yeah. I think. 
So now I've reached in with this hand. The spine is under my fingers. So because I'm a righty, I'll go back in with my dominant stronger hand. I can feel the heart and all that. I've already loosened everything up. So this is where I use the neck and I'll put the crawl here. And I use the neck to hold it. This allows gravity to allow the you know, intestines to fall towards the bottom. And then I hook that esophagus or the throat, not the esophagus, and I pull. And the guts come right out. Which, that's the crawl on her hands to give you an idea. Yeah. Where she hooked and where she kind of grabbed yeah. down at. Yeah. And then I just finished scraping them out. Did you spray your eyes, baby? Come there, right here, head that way, please. Beautiful. Thank you. Now, here's the intestine that goes to the vent. We're going to cut away the fat and tissue holding the gizzard, which is the stomach. And we'll pull these aside just in case there's any accidents here. We keep the organs away that we want to save. Hopefully we do. Angle of the table. table. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then I come in on each side of the vent and the intestine, making sure not to cut that intestine. And then once I get alongside it, like that, I come in and angle this way towards the tail and come down. And that frees up that side. And then I repeat the process on this side. Just go real slow, as comfortable as you are. And then once you get past, go right back into the tail. Now you can cut that with a knife, but it's really easy with scissors because you can just kind of come in and snip that. And then you get the vent, you get the oil gland from the tail. You don't want to keep that. You get everything off in one swoop, and now I can free my chicken up from any contamination the, just in case. Just kind of give them an idea of the, the angle that you come down. The angle for the tail here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I'll leave these here for just a second, and I'll go ahead and we save our necks because I use that for my bone broth when I do the butchering. Tomorrow, I'll do these in the backs and any bones from the breast, and we'll cook them down into some bone broth. And then she is ready to be rinsed and put in a cooler. So we'll put her there for now. Now what I'm going to do is get that fly out of here, because that's driving me nuts. Perks of being outside. Yup. Is I'm going to free up the gizzard here from some of this whatever it's called. <laughs> Sinuit. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm calling it. And then this way too, I can get my liver away from it and get the gallbladder away from it, which is this right here that you do not want to get anything that's in there in your meat at all. It's done. If it even pops, just throw everything away. Bad, bad, bad stuff. But all this, sorry, babe. All this um, fat and tissue and all that, you can kind of break away so that your gallbladder and your liver and all of that are away from each other. Like that. get my heart and pull it away. Now I just got my liver. So I'm going to hold this gallbladder in my hand. Hang on, let me get it twisted so you can see. You can see where it feeds in right there. And I'm going to pinch that really hard. And I'm going to literally, I don't, oh, hopefully my fingers will do it. Come on now. I'm gonna literally trim all this up anyway, so I don't care that the liver rips. And I just pull the liver, squeezing that, and I pull my liver away, right? And now I have the gallbladder in that hand. I'm not gonna touch anything in that hand until I rinse it off. So I'm gonna put my liver there. Now 
into our heart. Heart's in a sack, just like a human heart. So that sack, you just kind of pull it off. That's what that was. And then you just kind of come in here and cut it down. And go ahead and cut the gizzard away from its intestine. So, and this is all garbage. You could, some people feed it to their animals or pigs. I mean, you could definitely use it. We don't have pigs, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse the table real quick. And get the uh, insides out of the gallbladder. So this is what the chicken has eaten today. And I just cut it where there's a butterfly. You just cut the middle of the butterfly. So we've got grass and rocks, no feed, but that's it. And then I'm gonna rinse this out. take this inside of this stomach oh I'm gonna get it Trist oh Tristan I'm gonna actually pull it out for the first time fly take the inside out you can't eat that but you can eat that yeah those little ball sacks are delicious when you cut them you want to trim all this white off and you end up with just these little balls of meat if you trim all that off trim I even trim the inside of the stomach off some people don't you can't eat it it's just a little grizzly I don't care for it. A little too chewy. The liver, I just clean any of the little fatties off of. Make sure it's clean. When I trim it, I'll trim all this off. All of this here. And I end up with two pieces of liver. The heart we is like that. Well, we cook it. It all gets fried up like uh, scrumptious, yummy internal nuggets. If you're not used to something like that, it could be gross for you to hear, but uh, if you've had it, you know how delicious this is, and you're very jealous. And I'm going to rinse this girl out real good. Oh, I forgot my neck. Add in there. I guys got a metal bowl in there and ice so that those stay cold. You don't want to submerge those in water, especially your liver oil. Your livers, your livers, your livers, because it'll turn them real like a pale color, brown, or gray. Okay, Good me. Then what we do is we bring her over here to our cooler. Where you can see we have some others already. And we fill the cavity with ice. And we'll let them sit for 24 hours before we begin butcher. Boom. On to the next. Well, we're going to conclude the video here today, but we will let you know that we ended up processing 17 hens this day for a total of 95 pounds of hanging weight for our birds, which brought us up to a year total for 2022 to 349 pounds of hanging poultry. 
uh, weight in our freezer. So we are extremely blessed this year to have been able to do this with and for our family and look forward to continuing to do it in the future. We hope you like this video. Please subscribe, like, and share. Till next time, have a great day.